Good morning and welcome to Fine Arts Friday. I'm Justin Robinson, your homeroom instructor. Coming up next on KCPS Homeroom, we want to get you moving into the weekend with a little physical education. This class is taught by PE teacher Karina Jones. Everyone, get ready. Hello, my name is Karina Jones and I am a PE teacher in the KCPS School District, Kansas City Public School District. And today I am going to be doing a rhythm workout routine with you today. So normally we'll do a warm up to kind of warm up our body, warm up our muscles to prepare our bodies and our minds to be able to do each different workout. But for your warm up, I'm gonna explain each different type of movement and I'll go through it with you as we go through it. I'll explain each different type of movement, how to do it so that we can put it all together and then we'll put it to music, which is why I call it a rhythm workout. So just bear with me, take your time. As we go through each movement, I want you to do it with me as we review to get your body warmed up. So as we all know, the first movement are jumping jacks. We should know how to do jumping jacks. If you don't, I'll explain. But a simple jumping jack is you just open both legs up and your arms come above your head. So a number that I want you to remember when we do this rhythm workout is eight. Eight and four. Because there are gonna be times where I say eight jumping jacks or there are gonna be times where I say four of something else. So there's gonna be eight jumping jacks every time we do it and then you just follow me through with it as things change. So we'll do eight jumping jacks. So let's just go ahead and push out eight. Two and one. And then another movement that we will be doing is a side crunch. Now in this rhythm workout, it's gonna target our full body. We're gonna hit cardio, so our heart rate is gonna go up. It's gonna target our abs, our shoulders, our arms, our legs, and even the back of our legs. So with this side crunch, your, hit, your hands are behind your head and your elbow go to your knee. But you kind of meet it halfway and you want to crunch on the side. You should feel it kind of crunch. So we just do a side crunch. So let's just knock out maybe eight of those or as many as you can. So make sure that it's meeting halfway and you're not bending over too much to try to get your elbow to your knee. It should just be a crunch on each side. Now the side crunches, when we actually do the rhythm routine, they're gonna go a little fast, but if you need to slow down, you can just do four because there will be eight side crunches after we do eight jumping jacks. Side crunches will always come after eight jumping jacks. So you'll do eight jumping jacks, and if you need to slow down during jumping jacks, you can just step out with your foot, and if you wanna pick it back up, you could do your full jumping jack. But there'll always be eight jumping jacks and following that, it will be eight side crunches. If you want to slow it down, you can just do four, three, and four. Okay, so we've covered jumping jacks and side crunches. Another movement in this rhythm routine will be called a reach and squat. Now you can grab an item in the house if you want to add some weight to your arms as we do it. But if you don't, you can just do it with your hands, put your hands together and you'll open your feet up, maybe about shoulder length apart. And we're doing a regular squat, but our arms are included. We reach up with our arms, we squat down and it comes through our legs. We reach up and squat, reach up and squat. So let's do about four of those. One, and then a two, and a three, and a four. Now wait, this will just warms our, warm our leg up just a bit. But when we do our squat, we don't want our knees to go over our toes, okay? So when you do it, you just wanna make sure that it's leveled and it don't go over your toes. Your knees don't go over your toes. So we have our jumping jacks. We did our side crunches. We did reach and squat. Another movement, I call it the in and out. But all you're doing is your arms go in and then your arms go out. And you keep them at a uh, 90 degree angle, but you're gonna move with it. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then you'll go to the other side. You can go left first or you can go right first, it doesn't matter, four times. So we'll do this four times, one, two, three, and four, and your feet, you just step together, step together, step together, step together. Four times on the right, and then four times on the left. So let's do it together. We go one, two, three, 
four, moving to the other side, two, three, and four. Will be four of those. After that, after the in and outs, it will always be four kicks. After the in and outs, it will always be four kicks. Now you can do low kicks if you want to, or if you wanna take it up a notch, you can kick a little higher, okay? When you kick, don't kick with your toe, kick with your heel. You wanna see the bottom of your shoe. So you'll just do one, two, you can have your hands up if you want to, three and four, or you can kick low if you want. So after the in and outs, it will always be four kicks. Four in and outs to the right, four in and outs to the left, and then four kicks, okay? Just like eight jumping jacks, after eight jumping jacks, it will always be side crunches. So just follow along with me as we go through it. The next is called a windmill. So with a windmill, your arms are out, your legs are wide, open them up, keep your legs straight. Um, you can have a slight bend in your knees so you don't mess up your knees. But your hand is gonna swing to the opposite foot so my right hand will swing and touch my left foot, and then my left hand will swing and touch my right foot or my right toe. And when you do it, we're gonna speed it up, which is why it's called a windmill, okay? And you'll feel this in the back of your legs as well. So let's do eight of those, because it will be eight of those in the rhythm routine. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, each side is one, so I did that wrong. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So right and left one, or left and right one. After you touch each toe is one, and then you go to two. So it'll be eight of those. Um, so we have our jumping jacks, we have our side crunches. Side crunches always come, will always come after jumping jacks. We have our in and outs. Kicks will always come after in and outs. Then we have our reach and squat. And then we did our windmill, which would be eight of those. So eight and four, remember those numbers, eight and four. But I'll talk with you through it as we do it. After that, we have something called a squat cross reach. So it's basically what I just said, squat cross reach. So when you do that, you squat and you reach, cross over your chest and you just reach up, cross over your chest on each side. Just do a squat, reach across, reach across, and we will do eight of those. And then the last one, um, it's another squat movement, but it will be a side squat. You'll just step out with your right, and then you step out with your left, or you can step out with your left first, and then you step out with your right. When you do your squat, make sure your hips go back, and then they come back up. They go back, come back up, keep your chest up, and your head up. So we have our jumping jacks, our side crunches, our in and outs, our kicks, our reach and squat, windmill, we have our squat, cross reach, and then we have our side squats on each side, right and left. So now it's time to put everything together and put it to music. At the end of this rhythm routine, I'm gonna say run in place, and you can run in place or you can walk in place depending on how you feel. You know, don't do too much. Um, but do what you can and do it to the best of your ability. But at the end, we'll just run in place. You can run fast, you can do a little jog. And then after that, when the music is off, I want you to strike a nice pose because you made it all the way through, okay? So now it's time to put everything together and we're gonna put it to music. Welcome back. I hope you are ready to put it together with music for our rhythm workout routine. Let's get going, ready? So just follow along with me. Do as much as you can. If you need to slow down, you can slow down, but don't stop. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight jumping jacks. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Side crunches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one side crunch. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we go reach and squat. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Windmill. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Take a breath. You can just walk it out or you can run. But we're gonna start back up with in and out. Five, six, seven, go. One, two, three, and four, and one. Two, three, and four, and kick. Two, three, four, again. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. Give me some extra kicks, jumping jacks, go, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, side crunch, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, side crunch, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in and out, two, three, four, and other side, three, four, and kick, two, three, four, and rest, walk in place or run in place, because we're going to start with squat, cross, reach, five, six, seven, go, squat, reach, Keep going, keep going, keep going. Six, seven, eight, jumping jacks, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, side crunch, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, run in place, keep going, five, six, Seven, eight, keep going. Two, three, four, strike a pose and stop. Hey, I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun. I hope you didn't stop. If you needed to slow down, that was fine. But I hope that you enjoyed this time with me as we did our rhythm workout. And please stay tuned for more if you like this one. Are you interested in playing in the band or orchestra? Well, it's never too late to learn to play an instrument. And on this episode, we will introduce you to band and orchestra instruments and provide a little background to each one. We work with the staff of Palin Music for these examples. And again, this show today is for everyone. So everyone, stay tuned. Get it? Stay tuned? Okay, seriously, seriously. Everyone, stay tuned and let's get ready to learn. Hi, my name is Jimmy, and this is the trumpet. The trumpet is another member of the brass family. Um, it is the highest playing member of the brass family that you'll play in, in your band. It has three valves, like many of the other members of the brass family, um, and a couple tubes that you can pull in and out carefully if you'd like. The, the trumpet is an instrument that's been around for thousands of years in, in some form. They used to not have these little valves, these little buttons. They were actually just one long tube that was used in uh, military or, or, or different situations like that. So early trumpets, like I said, were just one long tube. And then after a while, they decided, hmm, we want to be able to play more notes. So they added a hole in the middle that you could cover to play other notes. And uh, after a while, they came up with this crazy invention of the valve, ooh, which changes the length of the tube and, and changes the note that you can play. If you don't press any buttons down on the trumpet, you only get a certain series of notes. Um, and so that's what it would have sounded like originally. Uh, and then they added one hole so you could get something more like um, and now we have a whole series of different lengths of, of tubing that we can play. The trumpet is an 
instrument that you can have fun with for a lifetime. <laughs> Emmett, and this is the euphonium. The euphonium is a member of the low brass family, which means that you make sound on it by buzzing your lips into the mouthpiece. It is. It has three valves on it, um, and the euphonium, uh, similar to other low brass instruments like the trombone, can play pretty low, and it can play pretty high. Family and the woodwind family. So as you can see, it's made of brass. It's 
It's made of metal just like a trumpet would be, but it's got keys like a woodwind instrument. So they, they wanted to make sure that you could take the technical facility of a woodwind, like a clarinet or a flute, and meld that with the brass sound of a brass instrument, and then here you have the saxophone. So the saxophone's kind of like a hybrid of the two. So if you want to learn how to play the saxophone, uh, you can absolutely do it and it can be fun for a lifetime. Hello, my name is Rob, and this is the snare drum. It's part of the percussion family. The reason it is called a snare drum is because underneath it, there are wires that give it that crisp sound. If I was to unleash the snares, I have a tom-tom sound. The snare drum has been around for hundreds of years. When you take up the snare drum, you will have to learn the drummer's alphabet, which is also called the rudiments. There's 26 of them. They were created by the little drummer boys during the Revolutionary War. They were signals because we did not have radios or walkie-talkies or phones, so the drummer boys would create signals, which would be like a paradiddle, five-stroke roll, flams, Roughs. Each one meant something different. And then, about a hundred years later, both the British and the American percussionists got together and found out that 26 of them matched. And that's where we get our 26 rudiments. So, have fun with the snare drum. Have fun with percussion. It'll last a lifetime. Hi, my name is Rob, and I'm here to introduce the percussion family. This is the xylophone, and this is the orchestra bells, also known as uh, the glockenspiel. The glockenspiel was created by uh, some German monks back in 600 AD, and the xylophone was brought to us uh, from Asia over into Africa around 900 AD. Uh, they are a tuned percussion instrument. They are set up like the piano, they can be played with either a soft mallet or a hard mallet. Each tone, each bar, is set up to a specific tone. So here is a C. It's metallic. Here is a C. Played with hard mallets. Xylophone, the Glockenspiel. Hi, my name is Jimmy, and this is the guitar. The guitar is a member of the stringed instrument family, although it is slightly different than a viola or a, a violin. Um, the guitar has six strings, uh, which you play by pressing them down with the fingers of, the fingers of your left hand and either plucking, like I was doing, with the fingers of your right hand, or playing with this small piece of plastic called a pick. Uh, the guitar has been around for a very long time in, in various forms, but in this form that we see, six strings tuned like this, uh, it has been around for a, a couple hundred uh, years. Um, the guitar is used in, in many different styles of music. Uh, the guitar is used in 
classical music, it is used in jazz, it is used in uh, popular music. Um, you might see the electric guitar in popular music. This is an acoustic, the electric guitar, you plug it in and it's a lot louder. Um, so the electric guitar gets used in, in rock and roll, blues, metal, and many, many other genres of music. second largest instrument in the string family. It is an instrument that you normally have to sit down and play. With the cello, it has is shaped just like the violin and the viola as the shoulders are curved. But on the bottom, there is something called an end pin, which is just a large stick that can be adjusted to your size and allows it to sit onto the ground. But back in the 1600s, cellos didn't have this, and they just played it with like their knees wrapped around it. Um, but in modern times now, we use this in pen. The cello can play many different styles like all the string instruments. Uh, we can play, you know, it's used in movies. <laughs> lower than the viola, but has the same strings as the viola, just lower sounding, as it has still the same C. But can be played higher up. And actually the cello is the, out of all the string instruments, the one that most resembles the human voice or the tenor voice. introduce the string family. The instrument I'm playing right now is the violin. The violin is the smallest of the string family. You play uh, the strings because they have four strings tied from the top, which are called pegs, which are just tied to the, the bottom of this piece, which is called the tailpiece. It is hollow on the inside, and as the string vibrates, sound travels through and comes out to the hollowness and projects sound. The violin's four strings are G, that's the lowest it can play, and the highest string it can play is a high E. And the violin can get very, very high. A stringed instrument can be played two different ways. It can be played with the bow, and it can be played by plucking the string with your finger. And it produces pitches by putting down your left hand on, onto the string or lifting up, and you change pitch. The violin can play many different styles, like fiddle songs. And other styles, like very popular in the movies. The violin is a wonderful instrument and something that you can enjoy for a lifetime. My name 
name is Parker and I'm here to introduce the bass, the last member of the string family. The bass is the largest instrument uh, that you have to normally stand and play. Sometimes you can sit on a stool and play. The bass is actually, as it is called part of the string family, if we notice it is shaped different on the top compared to the violin, viola, and cello, and that's because the rest of the family, the strings come from the viol family but the bass comes from the gamba family, and which means it's shaped differently. And all these families were formed around the 1300s, 1400s. Uh, the bass is, can be played many different styles and is used in many different styles of music. You can see the bass played in wind ensembles. You see basses played in rock and roll groups. Uh, the bass can be played with the bow or with pizzicato. jazz bands and, uh, and you can do what's called walking loose lines. The original reason that kind of strings were created in Europe at least was because they were designed to imitate the voice and singing and they were designed to use for dance parties to provide the music for dances. And, but strings have been around and originally in China 4,500 years ago in India and, and Africa, and they've taken many different shapes and forms until we have like what is the official orchestra string and instruments that we have. My name is Parker and I'm here to show you the viola. The viola is part of the string family. Just like the violin, it looks like it's shaped the same, but it's bigger. Uh, and it, that means it is lower in pitch. The lowest string the viola has is a C, uh, which is really nice and low and fun to play such scary things like And interestingly enough, the viola, one of the original ways to play the viola was, was on your knee because it was bigger. And so they, they called it uh, an instrument for your knee. And then it changed to being playing on here. Uh, the viola can be played with the bow or it can be played uh, by plucking the string. And just like the violin, it is, uh, you do it the same way. You play a string and you put down a finger and it changes the pitch. The viola can also play fiddle music. And the viola is one of the most changing instruments today as they constantly experiment with the viola and how it can be made differently and sound differently um, just because it's, it's much different than the rest of the instrument sound wise and how it made. Uh, the viola is an instrument you can enjoy for a lifetime. Hi, my name's Jimmy, and this is the flute. The flute is another me member of the woodwind family, even though you won't find any wood on its body. Uh, flutes used to be made out of wood, and so that's why we call them woodwinds these days. Um, the, the flute is an instrument that you can play uh, really low notes on, as well as some very high notes in comparison. You play the flute by pressing down on these keys with your fingers. Whenever the flute was first made, uh, we didn't have these keys, we just had holes that you pressed down, uh, a lot like you might have seen on, on a recorder. Um, and then we decided it was going to be a little bit easier if we didn't have to cover big holes with our fingers, and so we made these keys. You make sound on the flute by blowing over the top of this hole in the head joint, like this. You play higher by blowing faster and cooler air. with an incredible
incredible sound, and it's something that you can continue to enjoy for the rest of your life. Jimmy, and this is the clarinet. The clarinet is a member of the woodwind family because we have a wooden reed. Um, my reed is actually plastic right now, don't tell anyone. You play the clarinet by covering the holes in the instrument with your fingers, and also by pressing down the different keys on the body of the instrument. Early clarinets didn't have any of these keys. They just had holes in them, like maybe you've seen in a recorder before. Um, but People decided they wanted to be able to play lower notes, and since you can't cover all the way down here with your finger, we needed to make these fancy keys. Here are some low notes. And here are some high notes. You can play several different types of music on the clarinets, including classical music, concert band music, and jazz. Welcome back. You are with Coach K or Karina. I am a PE instructor in the KCPS School District, Kansas City Public School District. And we're gonna go over eight different yoga poses. And these eight different yoga poses are gonna help us to release stress in our minds and in our bodies. We carry a lot of stress with just life and just living there's things that come at us that you know we don't know how to handle sometimes sometimes you need to take a moment before you react to anything to calm your nerves calm your mind and calm your body so we're going to be going over eight different yoga poses um, while you're at home you can get a blanket you can get a yoga mat just so you feel more comfortable and that you have make sure you have enough space um, because we're going to be doing some stuff on the floor so I have my socks on and I have them halfway pulled up so I do not slip. You can use socks or you can be barefoot. But this is what I this is what I'm doing for today. So I first pose. Now in these different poses you may feel a little discomfort. You may feel something pulling. So you don't want to overstretch. Go as far as you can. I have been a cheerleader since second grade so I am very flexible so something that I do may not look the same the way you do it you do it to the best of your ability but two things I want you to remember when doing this you want to make sure that you inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth throughout every different movement that we do never stop breathing because sometimes when we're in a position we can kind of hold our breath but you want to make sure that you continue to focus on breathing in and then breathing out so let's get started so the first one is going to be called an easy pose forward bend so i'm going to show you how it looks i'll explain it to you and then i'll show you from a different view but what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you're on your knees whatever is comfortable for you and you're going to cross your arms your arms are going to go forward and they're going to rest on the floor after they rest on the floor then you're going to rest your forehead on your arm and you just want to stay in that position. You want to relax. You don't want to move around. Make sure once you get in that position that you are still. So let me just go ahead and show you from the side how it looks. Your knees are on the floor. Cross your arms. Forward bend over and rest your forehead on your arms. And you're just going to rest. Now I want you to stay there in that position. Like I said before, you want to make sure that you focus on inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth. So I want you to take three big inhales and you're just gonna follow me. So stay in this position, arms down, forehead to your arms. Rest, stay there. We're gonna take three inhales, 
and exhale. So you want to inhale, stay in the position, and exhale. Make sure your body is still. Inhale again. And exhale. This time, give me a big inhale. And let it all out. Exhale. Now from that position, I just want you to slowly come up. And in our next position, we're going to be on our feet. It is called a standing forward bend. So a little similar to what we did, but we're standing up. Our hands are going to be crossed behind us. So this is what it looks like. Cross them behind you. And we're just going to bend forward. Now you bend as far as you can go. Don't overstretch. You don't want to hurt yourself. Um, so you're just going to lean forward. Arms will come up and they'll go over your head. Make sure your hands are together. Just going to bend forward. You should feel this in the back of your legs where your hamstrings are. You should feel it right here. Let me just show you from the side. Interlock your fingers. You can bend your knees slightly. You don't have to lock them out. You just bend forward. Arms come above your head. And you just rest right here. Okay? Again, we'll do three inhales and exhales. Stay in that position. If you can go right here and you want to stay there, you just stay there. But you should feel this in your shoulders. And if you want to go a little further, you can go as far as your body lets you, okay? So stay in that position. Three inhales and exhales. Inhale, exhale. Second, inhale, exhale. Last one, give me a big inhale. Let it all out, exhale. Okay? Our next is a wide legged standing forward bend so we did an easy pose forward bend on our knees we did a standing forward bend while standing up on our feet now we're going to do a wide legged standing forward bend what you're going to do if you want to put a pillow down there for your head because we will be going far down on the floor or if you're fine you can just leave it so what you're going to do is you want to kind of your feet just a little further away from where your shoulders are. You don't want to go too far because you don't want to slide out of it. Wide legged stance. You're just going to bend forward. Your hips go back. And you just place your hands on the ground. And if you have a pillow there, you could just rest your head on the pillow. If you want to go further, you could just put your head on the ground. And it's up to you. Remember, you go as far as your body lets you. Do not overstretch. Okay? I don't want you to feel any uncomfortable. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Okay, so wide-legged stance, hips go back. It is a forward bend. You're gonna place your hands down. You can rest your head on the pillow or you can just stay right there and you will also feel this in the back of your legs as well. So while you're in that position, I'll show you sideways. Wide-legged stance, hands down. You can bend your elbows if you wanna go further or you can just stay here, put your head on the pillow and just rest. In that position, once again, we will do three inhales and exhales. So breathe in, inhale, exhale. Second time, inhale, exhale. Last time, give me a big inhale and exhale. Okay, we are at number four. This is called a rabbit pose. So it is kind of similar to the easy pose forward bend where we're on our knees or if you want to sit whatever is comfortable for you you can sit like this but I suggest you do it on your knees like you're getting ready to go in a child's pose which is another yoga pose but this is called a rabbit pose so you're going to interlock your fingers behind you so this is what it will look like you're on your knees Ooh, my knees just cracked um, interlock your fingers and what we're going to do Keep it like this, similar to what we did our, when we did our standing forward bend. You're just gonna go forward and your arms come above your head and you're just gonna rest your forehead on the ground or you can use that pillow that you had and you can put it right there and rest your forehead on the pillow, whichever is comfortable for you. Let me show you how it looks from this side. Knees are bent, interlock your fingers behind you. You're gonna bend forward, your arms are gonna come up behind you 
You're gonna rest your forehead on the floor or the pillow that you may have. I want you to stay in that position, bending forward, go as far as you can go. Remember, go as far as your body lets you go. We're gonna take three inhales, one inhale, and just relax, do not move, exhale, stay in that position. Second one, inhale, exhale, give me a la your last one, make it big, inhale, and exhale, let it all out. So that was our rapid pose. On to our thunderbolt pose, so you can stay in this position. Now we're gonna have a little fun with this one because we're gonna turn ourselves into a little pretzel. So with that, you're going to bend your arms at a 90 degree. You're gonna cross your right elbow or your right hand to match with the back of your left hand. Now, if you can go all the way over, then you do that. I can do that. So what you're gonna do is just cross the hands, just a little intertwine, and the back, both back of your hands should be touching each other. And you should kind of feel this in your shoulder blade area. It should be pulling. You should feel a little stretch. So you just stay in this position. You just hold here. And you'll just breathe in and out. And you just stay still. Do not move. You can kind of focus in, maybe looking at your wrist or just looking at your hands. Or you can just close your eyes. I normally close my eyes just so I can focus and remove any distractions that may be around you and just channel in and you'll just breathe into your nose, out to your mouth. And we'll do this together. Ready? Breathe in. Breathe out. Second one, inhale. Exhale. Last one, give me a big inhale. And exhale. All right, on to the next one. It's called a side stretch. So what I'm gonna do, because my knees hurt a little bit, so I'm just gonna come in a crisscross position. You can come in it as well, with whichever is comfortable for you. But with this side stretch, so you're gonna have, you can do your right, or you can start with your left, but we'll do both sides. So what I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with my right. Place your right hand on the floor, just rest it there. And then your opposite hand, which will be your left, if you started with your right, We'll just reach over and then you want to get your ear to your shoulder and just let your head hang heavy. Don't try to like force it to your shoulder. Just let it hang heavy and you want to reach up as a side stretch, which will be stretching this side. And then you'll also feel a little stretch in your neck as you let your head hang heavy with your ear towards your shoulder. Same thing, we'll inhale and exhale three times. You just reach over and if you want to Pull, uh, push your hand out a little bit more to get a further stretch. You can, whichever is comfortable for you. And we are going to inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Last one, inhale, and exhale. And we're gonna go to the other side. So if you started with your right knee, your left hand should be placed down on the ground. Let your head hang heavy to the left side. Reach up with your right hand. And we will inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one, inhale, exhale, and let it all out. Now what I'm going to add, which was not on my original plan, um, but I'm feeling some tension in my neck as I did the stretch. So I have a stretch that will kind of release some of that tension. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your right arm, right arm and right hand, and you're gonna place it just place it don't grab your head just place it and you're just gonna put the weight of your hand and just let the weight of your head go down and you're gonna tilt your chin towards your shoulder so if you're using your right arm 
then you should be tilting towards your right shoulder. And this other arm can just rest right there. You can put it down and you can just have it right here, whichever is comfortable. And you'll just tilt it. You'll kind of just push your head down just a little bit, not too much, and turn. And you should feel a little stretch in the back of your neck. And we'll just hold here and we'll breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Last one, breathe in. And let it all out. We're gonna go to the other side. Left hand on your head. Push it down just a little bit. Turn your chin towards your left shoulder. This arm is just sitting here. Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale. Exhale. Last one, give me a big inhale. And exhale. Now, I don't know if you felt it, but I did feel once I inhale and then I exhale, my head got a little deeper and I was able to stretch it just a little bit more. Just something that I felt to see if you felt it too. So we're gonna go to our last one, which is called the resting pose, which is very easy because you're just gonna lie on your back and you're gonna rest. But you're gonna focus in on your breathing. Just lie straight on your back. If you wanna stretch out a little bit, you can. Whatever you have enough space to do. You just want to make sure everything is relaxed. Your toes are relaxed. Your fingers are relaxed. Everything is relaxed. There should be no tension. Try to focus in on your breathing. Eliminate any distractions. If you wanted to put some calming music on for this last pose, you can. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. But we're just going to sit here. You're just going to rest. Focus in on your breathing. You can breathe on your own. We're going to rest here just for a little bit. Take your mind off of everything that may have went down or happened right before you did this. You're just going to channel in and calm down if something made you mad. Channel in on your breathing before you react to anything. If you were hurt, this will calm your nerves. Because when you react to somebody else and you're coming from a hurt place, hurt people, hurt people. FYI. So you want to calm your nerves before you decide to react to anything. Before you get overwhelmed. Before you get frustrated. Just take this moment. We'll do three inhales and exhales. I hope that you were breathing throughout. We're going to inhale. Exhale. here just for a quick second you're still breathing you're relaxed no moving eliminate any distractions five more seconds now what I want you to do we're not just going to get right up if your eyes are closed, you can go ahead and open your eyes. Wiggle your toes. Kind of wake everything back up. Wiggle your fingers. I want you to bend your knees first. Slowly bend your elbows to get yourself up. Slowly come up. And we are done. I hope that I was able to get some type of relaxation out of you. I hope you were able to release some stress. I hope you were able to relax and that you also enjoyed it and kind of challenge yourself to do the do each pose um, to release some stress from your body and your mind. And we will see you next week for more.
But things are a little bit different as we learn and work from home. We got work to do. We've got work to do. Ready for school. Ready for school. We can do this. But KCP gets strong. Even though it's a bit different, we're still learning, growing, and showing it. Let's do this. I'm not giving up. We can do this. Keep showing it. Let's move forward. Hey everyone, let's get started. Let's do this. Well, class is over for the day. Thank you all for joining us and have a great day. Remember, never stop learning throughout the day. <laughs> <laughs>